Well, hello to everyone and welcome to this Romeo first training pill. It's a pleasure. My name is Juan Prieto Vivanco, so I'm an um, energy manager at Minsight. Minsight is uh, a global IT uh, company providing solutions and services on the uh, on, on the technology field. So today we are going to be focusing this training pill on what are the uh, challenges that in Romero project we are addressing in order to uh, enable the data integration and the massive data processing of all the information generated by uh, offshore wind farms. That's the context of where we are working. So that's one of the um, wind offshore sites owned by, by Iberdrola. Uh, where the Romeo project is testing, is adapting, and is evolving uh, a set of IT technologies to actually an, an analytic models in order to enable a more effective uh, management uh, of these uh, kind of sites. So remember, in those cases, those wind um, turbines, they, they are in quite remote uh, locations. Uh, in many cases uh, can be several kilometers uh, far from the coast. So it's not an easy environment to manage uh, and, and, and to operate those installations. If we put it in context, so what are the key business challenges that are driving the, the, the management of this kind of wind generation infrastructure? So the first thing that we need to take into consideration uh, is the, the compromise, European compromise that we all have to uh, estimate the 50% of the total energy generation in the European Union uh, to be coming from uh, renewable resources, cheaper and more sustainable. Uh, as the number of uh, installation, renewable installations grow, the sites which are closer, easier to manage, uh, uh, start to be taken, and then uh, the new installations that come in the following years will have to look for more remote locations or different spaces uh, to be installed. Okay, so we will be seeing more and more of those offshore locations uh, to be used to to make the most of this uh, available resource, which is the wind power. Um, if we put it into a, a business uh, competitive environment, uh, in Europe, more than 50% of the total energy is going to be coming from those technologies. So that means that uh, the, the operators that are investing on those technologies, uh, they have two main drivers that if they want to be competitive, they will need to continually uh, maximize. The first one is to maximize the, the production. So the wind is an inexpensive resource. So whenever it's blowing, we need to make the most of it. So we need to ensure that we are continually producing, uh, maximizing the production of, of those wind farms. So if one of them uh, is not able to work because it's in maintenance, we are deviating from this target of maximizing production. So we need to ensure that those turbines are continually working and operating. The second one is if we want to remain competitive, we need to minimize the cost of maintenance and operation. There's no cost to the fuel because the fuel is the wind. Uh, but we still, if we want to be competitive, we need to minimize the cost of making sure that those uh, turbines keep on working and producing all that energy. Um, to address that challenge in Romeo project, uh, all the consortium members we are addressing the problem of uh, how to monitor and control more efficiently those remote installations. We are going to an architecture for monitoring and control where uh, latest state-of-the-art technologies are being deployed, put into competition, tested, and evaluated. So we can divide on four layers all the infrastructure that is required to ensure uh, this advanced monitoring and control capabilities um, that we identify here uh, 
in those layers. So at the left, we have all the physical equipment. So we have the turbines, we have the substations, transformers, all the lines that are feeding all that power to the, to the mainland. Um, so there is one layer that is installed together with the, all that equipment in the offshore location. So that's the edge intelligent node. So those are devices and software technology that is installed in the same, uh, in the wind farm, in the, where the wind farms, uh, wind turbines are located. Uh, is capturing all the information that is locally produced um, and is making all that information available uh, to make decisions and for operation, for maintenance, uh, to achieve those maximum, uh, pro, uh, targets of maximizing production and, and minimizing the cost. Um, so there is another layer, which is the, the speed uh, real-time bus. So that's a communication technology that allows to manage up to 1 million signals per second uh, using uh, the lowest possible bandwidth and with a, a strong reliability. So that's key to communicate those far locations with central monitoring and control centers uh, where the decisions are taken. And then uh, all that information needs to flow into massive data lakes where the information needs to be analyzed where different uh, artificial intelligence models need to be uh, adjusted in order to learn continually and improve the way that we operate those elements. Uh, typically, in the Romero project, we are focusing on, based on all this massive amount of information, very detailed from the, from the wind farms, uh, identify what is the potential for failure, forecasting the evolution, identify deviations in performance, and optimizing the decisions or the actions that we take in order to correct any problem before it actually happens. Um, so, Minsai, the company uh, I'm, I'm working for, uh, is focused on the first two layers and is providing technology at those levels. Different type of technologies required to cover those requirements. Uh, all the operation, responsibility and management is on Iberdrola part of the consortium and other partners also are working on the um, on the assets and business monitoring. So all the analytics and analysis is done on top of that information. Uh, some key elements that we need to take into consideration. The first one, uh, all these components that we deploy needs to be reliable and performing. Okay, we need to manage a lot of information and we need to make sure that they are available all the time. Second one, we uh, need to manage uh, either uh, one order or, or two order of magnitude, uh, volume, uh, higher volumes of information that current uh, wind farm monitoring and control architecture are currently managing. So we need to manage more information, more efficiently and in, in a more reliable way at the end to achieve the final target of reducing the operation and maintenance cost of those critical infrastructures. That's how it looks from the point of view of uh, the actual uh, architecture. Uh, so that's the, the control and monitoring architecture as it is being tested uh, in this case, in this example for one of the two sites from Iberdrola, which is East Anglia one in the United Kingdom. So here we have underneath at the bottom layer, we have all the different devices, all the wind turbines, all the monitoring equipment, the electrical equipment, uh, they're uh, producing information, measurements, uh, power output, et cetera. Okay, uh, alarms and, and relevant information. All that information is taken, is, is being captured by the local control systems. Um, then all that information, then we enter, so that's the edge layer, so that's what is installed physically. At the, at the wind farm location. And, and then we test different ways to process uh, that information that is made available by the sensors and by the control uh, systems. So basically, uh, we are testing uh, one direct way where all that information is captured in this case by this uh, Babel component, which is a component provided by Minsight that will manage whatever information is made available by any of the equipments that are in the in the farm 
Uh, it does the conversion because different protocols and, and, and information is packed packaged in different ways. So it's uh, taking all that information uh, and it's, it, it, he, this component is responsible to make it available for the operation and the analytic layers. In parallel, uh, we are testing another approach where instead of just taking the information and, and directly publish it and make it available, include it an intermediate layer. This is what is uh, identified as node one, where we allow some initial analysis and data processing to the information. So instead of sending the raw information uh, to the cloud or to the operators to make decisions, we allow some uh, initial basic analysis uh, so we can reduce the volume of information and we increase the value of the information sent. So the operator doesn't need to manage uh, details that are not relevant for the operational analysis that it needs to, uh, to be done. So we are testing those different approaches and using different kind of technologies. Uh, then all that information flows using this uh, high speed um, uh, real time middleware. So that's listing as a software communication uh, component that is uh, packaging all that information and ensure, ensuring that is delivered uh, deliver to the um, to the to the ones that are required. In numbers, so we are talking about infrastructure capable of managing more information, more granular, more detail on the operation of those uh, of that equipment. So that's in a fast picture, what kind of volumes we are managing at this point. So we are talking about the two sites provided by River Rolla, so the Dickinger with 70 turbines offshore and East Anglia with 102 turbines. Uh, in Bikinger case, we are uh, testing the approach of, uh, let's call it gateway, so picking the information, transforming the information from the different sources using a multi-protocol converter, which is this piece, and, and make it available in another format for the, for the operation and the anal analysis. We are talking about uh, about 200,000 different signals that are continually being managed and, and exchanged. Then uh, if we look at the other side, East Anglia 1, in this case, we are testing the two different approaches. The, the first one is just doing the mere data processing and conversion and make it available. And the other one is the edge approach where we allow for a layer where some analysis can be done locally before sending the actual information. So that's what we call the edge computing. In this case, we're managing 29,000 different signals with uh, typically every four seconds might be updated, okay? In some of the scenarios, we have gone up to 200,000 signals uh, so every, every four seconds between different remote locations. So uh, just to do a small zoom into these two different components, and technologies that uh, MinSight is providing for the project and is testing. The first one is the, the edge intelligence. So that's putting some computing capability and, and analysis close to the actual device that we want to manage. So in this case, uh, the key value that we are trying to demonstrate uh, on this technology are summarized here. So the first one is interoperability within the park. So uh, this component is responsible to capture information from different devices, from different vendors, talking different protocols. So putting everybody at the, at, the, at the edge, at the wind farm level, all the equipment to be able to exchange information. So that's a key function uh, independently of who is the vendor, who is the provider of that solution. The second one is interoperability. Uh, northward, so to, from the park to the dispatch center. So uh, this technology also is responsible to capture that data, select what data is actually relevant, uh, convert it, and make it available on the protocols that the analytic layers, the cloud layers, uh, will be able to process and analyze. Protocols like MQTT, RESTful, MQTT, these kind of protocols native to a, to a cloud, uh, are the kind of protocols that we are enabled. Uh, so um, in parallel, uh, this technology 
creates some space where we can deploy uh, uh, some analytics or in, in the form of containers. All these need to be able to scale to even uh, not, not hundreds, but thousands of different devices and, and more signals to be brought. So those are the main elements that are being tested in the, in the project. The other alternative, which is complementary, is whenever we receive information from one equipment, we need to understand that information. We need to decode it and we need to make it available uh, so the, the operation and analytic layers are able to understand all that information and receive it uh, in real time. So all those components need to comply with these uh, key functions at the bottom. So in this case, this Babel component already uh, also provided by means uh, needs to be high availability, so it needs to be uh, redundant and, and ensure that it doesn't fail. Uh, so in that case, we will be losing communication and, and, and control over the, the wind farm. It needs to be horizontally scalable. Okay, and it needs to, uh, and right now we have tested up to 200,000 points every four seconds. So it's already been tested and allow us to test uh, how much information is able to process, enabling this more granular monitoring and control of the, of the infrastructure. That's how it looks, uh, the infrastructure, so the local equipment that is installed at the, at the wind farm to allow uh, reacting, analyzing the information before actually uh, send it upward, okay? Uh, again, those are components that are cheaper in cost because we have to deploy many units of those that are, need to be redundant, need to comply with all the certifications to be installed in this harsh environment, and needs to give us all the remote control uh, to manage all those additional uh, equipments. So that's all. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's been a pleasure and from Minsight as one of uh, main players in the in the technological uh, European domain and, and the Romeo project. For any question, please uh, go to www.romeoproject.eu um, and we would be happy to attend any question or any information that you require. Thank you very much.